all right, I'm ready for an adventure, so I'm sitting in a Jeep. And there's a song that says, let's go get this thing stuck. Well, sometimes people get stuck in life. It's time to get unstuck. But if you're gonna get unstuck, you gotta get stuck. So I might as well get where you are. I got a cameraman in the car with me, Tim. We're gonna <laughs> get stuck. I'm gonna get this thing stuck. <laughs> Here we go. You know what, you can do what everybody else does and get what everybody else gets, or you can do what God called you to do and get what God called you to get, and it's gonna be a lot more fun than what everybody else has. But you might get a little dirty and a little scared in the process. Today we're talking about being a spiritual gangster. You know I heard a song one time that said, I'm a lyrical Jesse James. I feel like that sometimes in my prayer life. Like I'm like all tough and I'm like I'm ready and I'm strong. And then other times I feel like, mommy, God come help me because I don't know if I can do this. And there's spiritual warfare and it's real. So how do you go to war? What happens if you do some kind of gangster stuff in your life that you're not real proud of? How do you come back from that? And how do you win the war against darkness? Sometimes you're gonna get stuck. Sometimes it's gonna get rough. Sometimes you're gonna look around and be saying, I'm, there's no way in the world I'm supposed to be here. But you know what you are? You're a spiritual gangster. You got the best mob boss on your side. His name is Jesus. God the Father, he's the Godfather. You know what I'm talking about. He's got it all under control. I don't care where you're coming from, where you're going to, we're gonna take you from the pain to the promise in a real raw and organic way. And if you aren't following me on YouTube, I'm gonna be sending the mob bosses out after you. You better click subscribe, click follow, turn your notifications on on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and are you ready? Let's go. We're talking about spiritual gangsters. We're talking about flexing our muscle for Jesus. But, yeah, we're not so strong by ourselves, but oh, we got back. You know what I'm talking about? But I do have a gangster friend with me. I mean, not a like like a Real like gangster. the FBA <laughs> is not worried queuing in or the CIA right. is not worried when we talk. But you're from where's your accent from? Bahamas. Bahamas. Yes. Pastor Dury Thomas. Pastor's in the Bahamas at Relevant Kingdom Center yep. in Florida. Yes. And you have quite a story, and you are a success. You are a blessing going somewhere to manifest. You are a preacher's preacher. <laughs> So, I mean, people would think it's been, you got your act all together, all the things are good, but you have had to be a spiritual gangster in life because there's been some stuff that's happened. Just amazing to see that sometimes we have to go through some of our roughest battles and our toughest battles also that we could be who God's called us to be, you know? And so, yeah, I've been through so much mm -hmm. in life. Tell me about your parents. Well, when I was six, my father passed away. He shot himself, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but after that, if that were not enough, my mom passed away when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And she passed away from a blood disorder called lupus. Mm -hmm. um, and so at 10 years old, here I am without a father and without a mother. So who did you go to live with? So at that point, I first lived with my mother's mom in an island called Nassau, Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And while there, I was so rebellious that my mother's mom decided I've got to send you to your father's mom, where I grew up there for the majority of my life mm -hmm. um, in Freeport, Bahamas. Mm -hmm. 
And you went to the doctor. Yeah, so in Freeport, my father's mom was a Bible-believing woman of God. And the doctors were originally treating the scars that appeared on my face mm -hmm. as wingworms. My grandmother at that time said, Dury, you know, God told me that I've got to take you to a specialist. So she, you know, got all the money she could, carried me to a specialist, a rheumatologist um, and a dermatologist. And when we went there, that doctor came to me and he said something to me that changed my life. He said, young man, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you've got a blood disorder called lupus. Mm. And you'd heard that word before. And I've heard that word before. Not only did I hear that word, but I saw what my mother went through. I saw all of the pain that she experienced. I saw the sleepless nights that she had, and I knew what the end result was. Mm. And so when the doctors at that point told me that I would have, I had lupus, that was in the end of the story. Because at that point, he said that it turned now inward. And it started to not just attack my face and my scalp, but now it had started to attack my inward organs, mm. kidneys. And at this point, it was so aggressive that he said that he did not even see me living past 18 years old. And how old are you at this time? And I was about 11 at this time. Wow. Yeah. So you got a life threatening I mean, yeah. a, a life-ending diagnosis. You got yeah. this prognosis that said seven more years. Because my grandmother there was a Bible-believing Christian. Mm -hmm. She carried me to this Assemblies of God church right up the road from where we lived. And you know, as a kid going there, I always heard them preach about this place called heaven and hell. I said to myself, you know, you know what? If I'm gonna die, I'm not gonna go to a devil's hell. Wow. And from that point, you know, I realized that even though doctors are skilled and they can give you a word, mm. they don't have the final word. Yeah. Fine, friendly, and favored. Teleportation because I could be in one place or the other at any time. I wanted to be Superman, believe it or not. <laughs> Me and my kids are gonna kill us. They're gonna kill us the heck you <laughs> Alright, my backup left me. And here I am in the car by myself trying to get out of the creek. But sometimes the little leading of the Holy Ghost can beat the leading of the people who are with you. Woo! <laughs> or we go sideways. Let's try it like this. Oh, Jesus. Well, we're gonna have to try it some more. We're gonna back up and get some speed up on it. After becoming a Christian, I sat down and I opened my Bible, and amazingly, that Bible went to Psalm 118, verse 17, <laughs> that said this, you will live and, and not, not die, die to declare what the Lord has done. And look at me, I'm here on the Nicole Crank Show. <laughs> not saying that you don't look young, but I'm just saying, you look like you might be a little over 17. <laughs> yes, at, at this point in time, I am now 39, but you know, to, to, to see the amazement of the story, and I went back to the doctor when I was about 17 years old, and I will never forget it. Very same doctor that gave me that diagnosis at 11, he came and he started to check me out and he said this to me, he said, Dury, it's happening now, isn't it? And I said, Doc, um, nothing's happening. I want you to sign a health certificate so that I can go to Columbus, Ohio to World Harvest Bible College with the great Pastor Rod, <laughs> Dr. Pastor Rod Parsley. Mm -hmm. So the doctor checked me out and then all of a sudden, he brought in a second doctor mm. and she started to check me out. Mm -hmm. And then the two of them left the table without saying a word to me, went in the corner and started to consult within themselves. But can I tell you, that doctor came back to that desk, that desk to me that day. Mm. And he said, Dury, I don't know what happened to you, mm. but with the exception of the scars, you were one of the healthiest persons that will walk out of my office mm. this day. Oh, I just got good. Look, look, <laughs> look at the goosebumps on my arms. And you know, God spoke to me a word so recently about scars. 
Yes. Because he, he was speaking to me uh, when I wrote the book, I Will Thrive, I had, was living in survival mode, mm. thinking life was so limited by either time or diagnosis or what had happened to me. And God showed me scars and he said, yes. that's where your wounds used to be, but yes. all that's left is scars. And when you touch the scar, there's not pain. Yes. He said, but just like the scars in Jesus' hands, yes. Powerful. Jesus touches them and he remembers yes. what happens, Yes. but he doesn't feel the pain of it anymore. No, he doesn't. It, and yeah, and you know, just to say this, that while you're there, because that's such a powerful and potent point, because I tell people all the time, that scars are evidence mm. that you've been through something, but you survived it. Mm. And sometimes people need to see scars mm -hmm. so that they can know that your story is real. But more than your story being real, mm -hmm. that your God is real. Mm -hmm. Because your scars provide evidence mm -hmm. that whatever you've been through mm -hmm. didn't kill you. Mm -hmm. It only made you stronger. You know, I don't know what kind of scars you have or what kind of wounds you have that are healing but this is what I know. You're not called to just survive the wound. You're called to bear that scar with a pride in who God is and what yes. He delivered you from. And you're called to thrive through it. What's your dream? And what is it gonna take to turn your dream into a reality? You know, I heard it said once that all a goal is, is a dream that's been written down. But a dream that doesn't get written down is never gonna become a goal. And I think that's the first step that keeps people back from living their dream. What if I told you I had five simple steps that an elementary school student could do that could get them to live their dream? Can you do elementary steps? I know you can. I'm gonna help you write your goals. And not just write them haphazard, you're gonna do it in a scientific, psychological way that it's gonna bury it in your heart in a biblical way that's gonna help you live your dreams. I'm not just gonna help you write your goals, I'm gonna help you develop the vision, get an action plan with a map, measurement, assessment, and planning. I'm gonna get you to commit to your dreams with the immense value of simply not quitting and then celebrate. Those are the five steps and I'm gonna walk you through them for free. I know, you can get my goals book for free. You just pay the shipping. All you have to do is go to nicolecrank.com forward slash goals. Here's the thing. I think you want the workbook. I think you want the help walking it through. And I've got videos that are almost guaranteed to get you there this year. You know what? Let this be the year you stop dreaming and start living your dream. It was almost a year ago that God told me, your worship is your warship. And showed me this aircraft carrier and everybody landing on it. Here's the bad news and here's the good news. The bad news is God's not going to tell you that worship is your warship unless you're going to be in a war. The good news is when you look up an aircraft carrier, it is the most stable, most effective weapon of defense and attack in the entire military. God is sending you in with the right weapons for your warfare. And your warfare is not carnal, but it is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're fighting not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness in high places. There is this little boy. He was nine years old. He was just minding his own business. And a man drove up, lured him with some money, and pulled him into a car and kidnapped him and started driving away. You know what that little boy did? He didn't cry. He didn't scream. He started singing Hezekiah's song. He sings this song and says, singing praises to our God, singing praises in one accord. Give him praise, give him praise to our God. And he just sang it over. I'm giving praises to my God. Giving praises in one accord. 
Give him praise. Eight years old. Give him praise to my God. Driver's driving the car. He's taking him away. We don't even know what we wanted to do with him. Did he want to abuse him? Did he want to molest him? Did he want to kill him? He didn't think about that. He just kept worshiping. He said, I'm giving praises to my God. Giving praises in one accord. He just kept doing it out loud. I'm giving praise. Giving praise to my God. Finally, the driver pulled over to the side of the road, opened up the door, and told the boy, get out of my car because worship will break down the enemy. He cannot stand it when it looks like everything has gone downhill and yet we will worship him in one accord. Let me ask you a question tonight. Will you worship him in the middle of a battle? God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind. So we do this segment called One Word, but I'm giving you two. Okay. And then you can give me as many words as you want. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But I just want to see what you think when you hear the word spiritual gangster. Spiritual gangster. I think of somebody that is taking the world with the word by force. Mm. You know, because the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Mm. <laughs> Come on, somebody. All right, I got bought out of there, but uh, uh, in a little mud, and there's mud on the camera here. Ugh. There's mud on the car, there's mud everywhere. But we made it out, people. We made it out. There's mud on my pants. <laughs> you know what? You might come out of life with just a few marks on you, but it's going to be okay. You know what? You earned those scars. And the fact is, you can look back at them and go, you know what? I remember what it was like to be there. That's why I'm never going back. I'm not going back. I'm looking ahead. I'm here to declare to you it's a new season, baby. So I know you had to deal with physical scars as a teenage boy, Yeah. but then that emotional scarring, which one do you think was harder for you to deal with? To be honest with you, I believe the emotional scars were. And the reason I say that is because, you know, we could cover up physical scars, Mm -hmm. you know, but to be honest with you, emotional scars, they're so deep and they're easily easily hidden. Mm -hmm. And so at times, they're not just scars Pastor Nicole, but I found out that they can become wounds that fester Mm. because we don't acknowledge them all the time. Mm -hmm. We don't address them. Mm -hmm. And whatever we don't address can become a mess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And unless we allow God to deal with them. Mm -hmm. um, And, you know, it would be one thing for them, for those wounds to become scars, because Mm -hmm. at least that's progress. Yeah. But there's still something deep inside that you're struggling with. For me, when it comes to those emotional hurts and wounds and places in my life that I've allowed God to heal, Mm -hmm. I'm able to reference it Mm -hmm. without having to reside in it. Mm -hmm. In other words, I can literally use it as a testimony now because I'm confident and comfortable knowing that God, Mm -hmm. the healer, came in and he did what nobody else Mm -hmm. could. And now, what the enemy expected to use to break me down, Mm -hmm. God is using those areas Mm -hmm. to build not just myself up, but to build others up. But even as an adult, Mm -hmm. have you ever been sensitive just about? Very, very much so. And you know, and and that's why I can say that emotional scars are so heavy because I did my best at times to look good, you know, play the part. Mm -hmm. But there were times that nobody would know but I would go inside my room and I would look in the mirror and I would be so depressed at times because I'm like, God, if you're, you're such a great healer, why don't you take away the scars? And you know, I was struggling, I was struggling, I was struggling. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, it was still a moment and place in my life where depression would come and go and I would fight and I would try to win and beat it. But sometimes I didn't do such a good job. Were you at our church or were we at your church? And God gave my husband a word for you. Well, I tell you what, 
that was defi a defining moment. And you guys were in the Bahamas at our church at that moment, and I will never forget it. But there were two moments the Holy Spirit used Pastor David in such an amazing way. I remember sitting in my room and I was questioning God and I was like, God, do you see me? Because I felt like I was so lost in obscurity at one point, you know, and you know, I know others were seeing me, but I was like, God, do you see me? Do you see my hurt and my pain? And I kid you not, I went on my Instagram and I would always look at Pastor Dave's, you know, Instagram and I would be encouraged by all of the messages and the short stories and the word. And one day, Pastor Crank sent me a message out of the blue and he said to me, Hey, my Bahamian pastor, I see you. Can I just tell you, I broke down in my room and the Holy Spirit came in. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it did something so amazing because in that moment, in that moment, God reminded me of a word that he said to me, Dure, I will become a father to you even though you have no father. And when Pastor David said, hey, my Bahamian pastor, I see you. It was off the heels of that prayer. God, do you see me? Mm. And God used a voice of a man to speak into my life and bring me up. And if that were not enough, you know, the relationship, you know, started to build and you guys decided, hey, you know, you're going to come and bless the island. And we were so grateful. But while there, you guys embraced me in prayer that day. And Pastor David came to me and he said, you know, the Lord told me to tell you, <laughs> it's time to embrace the face. <laughs> embrace the face. And I can tell you it was in that moment that I was reminded that my, my difference mm. doesn't make, it, make me a bad person. It makes me a unique one. Yeah. You know, that there's nobody on the planet that got my face, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> and so that my, my pain would actually now be the true platform that yeah. God would use to continue to propel me further into the purposes that He has for me. You know, I believe you've been running from some things. God told Dury the same thing He told me, <laughs> use your pain as your platform. And it was the very last thing that I wanted to do. I'd already learned my lesson with a little girl in fifth grade, right? You tell somebody your pain, they tell everybody else, it turns into terrible things and you get shunned, labeled and ashamed, right? No. God says, humble yourself yes. under the mighty hand of God. I'm telling you right now, this thing you thought was too big for you and you couldn't handle it. God is going to bring you through this thing and it's not just for you. Dari didn't come through this thing. He wouldn't have been a preacher without it, y'all. He's got it. God is going to kick the devil in the head. The devil thinks he's such a gangster. He ain't got nothing on God. Uh, you become a spiritual gangster by reading the word, praying, and fasting. There's no new ways, kids. Understand that you have authority, you have dominion. Nothing can break you or stop you. So when the enemy hits, hit harder, hit back in prayer. Hit back in the consistency and the time that you spend in prayer. And know that you have power to defeat the enemy. Man, get in your word. Read the Apostle Paul, read Deborah, read David, read some of the gangsters of the word and what's on them will get on you. If I ask you about the last 12 months of your life, what would you say? I survived, I made it, I got through. You know, I think that's what the enemy meant to do with our year. I think he meant to crash it, just like make us survive. But that is not what God called us to do at all. It's what I did with the first part of my life, rape, molestation, abuse, marrying the wrong guy, trying to find the right guy, my wedding went whack, lived on the bully bus, played the shame game. I really think for a long time I tried to survive in life. And God said, no more. You're not called to survive, you are called to thrive. So you know what I did? I wrote a book. And now I'm here to tell you I'm feeling pretty vulnerable because this book is my story about all of my pain and heartache. But 
the seed that God planted in that space and how he brought me through. Wanna know what the book's called? It's called, I Will Survive. Big rip on the page, no, I will thrive. God has called you to thrive in life. And I'm so excited to share this with you because I believe God is gonna use this as something to take you out of where you've been into where you're called to be. I just finished the first chapter of I Will Thrive and can I tell you, I could not put it down. It was so good, it was captivating, inspiring. I wrote down quotes, you've got to read it. Together, we're gonna get this message into a lot of people's hands. All you got to do, get on the website right now. You know, Dury's going to pray for you in just a minute. But before he does, I want to share something with you. You might have some scars and think everybody else's life is perfect. But the fact of the matter is, they're showing you their stars and not their scars. I'm going to be honest with you. When I get on my social media early in the morning, I don't want to look like that. So I swipe a little filter on there and I feel so much better about myself but I have not yet showed you the scar that I got just this week with this film crew right here. I got my scar covered. It's hard to share your pain. It's hard to share your scar, but God can turn your scar into a star when you use your story from your scar for his glory, just the way Dury did. I believe God is calling you out right now saying, come out of darkness, come out of shame into his marvelous light. And when you use it for him, he can make anything glorious. You know, I just remembered Monica, she sent it on the website. She's from Gibraltar. And I, I had to reach back out to her and say, where is Gibraltar at? Because my geography is not so great. And she said, Gibraltar is just south of Spain and Europe. She said, you ever heard of the rock of Gibraltar? I'm like, yeah, yeah. She's like, oh yeah, that's where I'm from. And she was having some scars. She was having some trouble and she shared it. She said, you know, as COVID happened and the lockdowns came, I started getting depressed. I started getting scared. I started getting nervous. So what I did is I put in my headphones and I kept playing you and Joel Osteen and you and Joel Osteen and you and Joel Osteen. And she said, you took me out of a dark place and you gave me hope again. I love that the shows can be on demand on YouTube and you can watch them anytime you want to. You know how we were able to reach somebody in Gibraltar, a country I didn't even know where it was? It's because people like you help us fulfill this call of making our pain our platform. We've been real and raw and organic and we can't do it without you. You know, when you go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash donate, like so many of you have, and you give $20 a month or $50 a month or $100 a month, to some of you it's not a big deal, but I wanna let you know it is a big deal because we would have never helped Monica and Gibraltar without your help. When you sow a seed into this ministry, you get the harvest that comes from the lives that are changed and the people that are helped. You know what, I believe God wants to help you right now. Let's have Dury pray. Father, we thank you right now because there's somebody watching and they're struggling. They're struggling with hurt. They're struggling with depression. They're struggling with pain. And Lord, even if they don't have only physical scars, there are emotional wounds that are festering. But today we thank you because the Holy Spirit is doing surgery on their hearts and in their life, even in this moment. And you're reminding them of the great plan that you have for their life. You're reminding them that their pain doesn't define them, but their pain will push them to the purposes that you have for their life. And Father, we thank you because we know that there is no greater father than you. There's no greater healer than you and that you have the final word and that the best is still yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. That's a vibe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so that means, okay, that's cool. That's a vibe or a, a vibe? A vibe. A vibe. Yeah. It's supposed, it's supposed to be, to be vibe. <laughs>